So today we're going to take a look at solving word problems with inequality. So if you think about the words in the word problem that indicate the symbol is going to be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, what are some of those words? Okay, so at least, at most, is a minimum, you have no more than, you have no less than. These are all words that indicate you're going to have an inequality symbol. It's nice when they tell you to write an inequality so you know for sure, and then it's nice when they tell you to write the equation. So at the top, the first star just says, recall, okay, to be a solution to a system of inequalities, your, ans your answer must fit all constraints. Okay, so it must be in that solution set. And sometimes word problems lead to inequalities, and we can solve them graphically or algebraically. So on the front page, we're going to do graphically. On the back, we're going to do algebraically. So go ahead and read number one, underlining your key statements. The, if you look at the actual grid, it tells you what your variable for x is and your variable for y is. On the grid, down below, it says our x-axis is number of bags of soil. So x is the number of bags of soil, where y is the number of plants. Title of the graph is plants and soil that Marsha can buy. So Marsha's buying plants and soil for her garden. The soil is going to cost $4 per bag, and the plants are $10 each. She wants to buy at least five plants and can spend no more than 100. So we're going to write a system that tells us of linear inequalities. So I'm going to write down the variables. I want you to focus on writing the two inequalities. Our first inequality comes from the statement, she wants to buy at least five plants. The plants is the y. So according to five, the y has to be at least. So that means the y can be equal to five or greater than. The other statement um, she can spend no more than $100. Well, the spending comes from here. $4 per bag and the plants are $10 each. So $4 per bag of soil, which is X, and then $10 per plant, which is Y. How does that compare to 100? She wants to spend no more. So this over here is the amount that she's spending. Sarah? Less than? Okay, so she doesn't want to spend any more than 100. Can she spend exactly 100? Yeah. So less than or equal to. So both of those lines, are they going to be solid, dotted, one solid, one dotted? Do solid. solid. They're both going to be solid because of the equal to. Okay, so now we're going to graph. To graph, they both need to be in the form uh, y is or solve for y, and the first one is. So we graph it as if it was y equals 5. So here's an intercept of 5. Bless you. We said it's a solid line. And is a y equals line horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. So we graph it as if it was y equals. OK. And then we're going to graph all the values greater than 5. There's the equal to, the solid line, and then greater, would that be above or below? Above. So I'm going to label this um, as y greater than or equal to 5 before I shade. The other inequality is not in terms of y is or y equals. So we have to isolate y for the next one. So to isolate y, the first thing you want to do is subtract 4x. 
we'll have 10y is less than or equal to negative 4x plus 100. Divide by 10, 10's cancel, and we have y is less than or equal to. Because we can't divide 4 by 10, we leave it negative 4 tenths x plus, and then 100 divided by 10 is 10. 4 tenths can be reduced. In simplest form, that would be what? 2 fifths. So y is less than or equal to negative 2 fifths x plus 10. So to graph this, our y-intercept is where we begin, which is at 10 on the y-axis. And then the m, the slope, how we move. So our y-intercept 10 and our slope negative 2 fifths. So we're going to go down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you guys have your straight edge so you can line up your ruler and draw a solid line or a dotted line? Solid. So down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to hit where on the axes? What did we say it was? 25. So that won't have an arrow. We're going to shade above or below. Below. So I'm going to label it first. Um, our label would be 4x, the original, plus 10y is less than or equal to 100. So I'm going to shade, so it's a little bit different. I'm going to go this way. My solution set is going to be right here. Okay, everything's labeled now. Use the graph to determine if Marsha will be able to buy 10 plants and 8 bags of soil. Well, plants was the Y, 8 bags of soil was X. So is 8... 10 in our solution set? No. no is correct. So if you go to 8 and then go up to 10, that's right here. 8, 10 is not in that um, solution set. So the answer is no. Next one. How many bags of soil could Marsha buy if she wants to buy 8 plants? So she wants to buy eight plants. I'm going to highlight that in pink. Eight plants is here, and this is what's in the solution set. This says to state um, all possible solutions. So which, okay, I should have actually drawn a solid line. So for eight plants, that could be an option. There's how many bags of soil for this point right here, though? Zero, right? And you said five was an option, right? Yeah. So for five bags, that's an option. So five's an option, zero is an option. Any others? Everything in between. Everything in between. Okay, for whole bags of soil, that would be one, and then two, three, and four. And then last, if Marcia knows that she needs to buy four bags of soil, what is the maximum number of plants she can buy and still stay within her budget? So in green, four bags of soil, what's the maximum? So that's going up. The maximum number would be? Elijah? Eight. eight. So eight bags. I'm sorry, eight plants, rather. Maximum number of plants. So in number two, D has at most 150 to spend on restocking dolls and trains at her toy store. 
Dolls cost $7.50 and trains cost $5. Dee needs to fill her shelves but has room for no more than 30 toys. Write a system of inequalities to solve this problem. So I'm going to use D for the number of dolls and T for the number of trains. So based on the fact that she has at most 150 to spend and dolls cost 750 and trains cost $5, that inequality would be 7.50D plus 5.00T is at most means less than or equal to 150. And then what's the other? So the other comes from she has room for no more than 30 toys. So the number of dolls plus the number of trains is no more than 30. So it can be 30 or less. Part B says D knows that there are only seven dolls available to order. So she knows that D is equal to seven. Is it possible to buy the rest of the toys as trains to stay within her budget? Okay, so her budget, she has at most uh, 150 to spend. So is 7.50D plus, whoops, for D I'm actually going to plug in the 7. We know we have 7 dolls, plus 5.00T less than or equal to 150. So $7.50 times 7 is $52.50. I need to subtract that from 150 and then divide by 5. Subtract, we get 97.50, divide by 5, and T is less than or equal to 19.50. Well, T represents the number of trains, so it's really 19 and a half. Can you buy 19 and a half? No, no. no so the greatest value less than 19.5 would be, okay, so if T was 19, Okay, the other inequality was that D plus T is less than or equal to 30. So if I plug in the $7 she knew and had the 19 trains, what's that a total of for toys? 26. Okay, that is less than or equal to 30. So to answer the question, okay, the first part said, is it possible to buy the rest of toys as trains and stay within our budget? Is that the yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Second part, let's move that up. So yes, she'll stay within her budget. And still fill the shelves. Will she fill the shelves? No. no. Full would be how many? 30. 30. So did she fill it? No. no. Yes, she'll stay within her budget. However, she will not fill the shelves. All right, number three. Brittany wants to bake at most... 15 loaves of bread for a bake sale. She wants to make banana bread that sells for a buck 25 each and apple bread that sells for a dollar 50 each. She wants to make at least $24 in sales. So I'm going to let A equal the number of apple loaves and B the number of banana. The first inequality is that she wants to bake a total of apple and banana 
of at most 15 loaves. So her, the number of apple and the number of banana, it can be 15, but at most would be less than yes. The other inequality comes from the statement that she wants to make at least $24 in sales. Well, she's going to get a um, dollar twenty-five per loaf of apple, of apple, and then a dollar fifty. Nope, I had that backwards. Banana, apple is one fifty. One fifty apple, a dollar twenty-five banana. So at least twenty-four dollars means she can make twenty-four dollars, or no? Greater than. Part B, Brittany knows that she has enough ingredients to make six loaves of apple bread. Okay? So we know that A equals six. So with the A plus B, that goes with how many she wants to bake. If we know she's going to make six, that means she's going to bake how many banana? Nope. Nine. It can be equal to nine, right? So we're good. It didn't come out to be a decimal. So if B is nine and A equals six, the question says, is it possible for her to make the rest of the loaves as banana bread and still make enough money in sales? So let's plug in a dollar fifty times six plus a buck twenty-five times nine. One fifty times six? Yep, so dollar fifty and dollar fifty is three. And then 125 times 9? 1125. For a total of how much money? Is that greater than or equal to 24? No. So it said, is it enough? So all you need to say, um, or is it possible for her to make? The answer is no. And we just justified mathematically. So we just need to say no.